David Bohm, of course, is one of the world's most important physicists, who not only was masterful in physics, but also uh, had the deep insight to apply this knowledge to society and into what we could term a leadership process, which was his dialogue process, where he um, developed a methodology that uh, was, uh, if applied in a deeply uh, developed way, uh, to bring about kind of a single intelligence in a group to yeah. bring about co-creation. And so that's also very close to the works that you have undertaken later. Um, I think what's interesting is that um, uh, he also felt that in order to do that, you needed to have the personal maturity, the inner development, to actually play at that level. What did you understand about that in your own work of developing uh, leadership processes and working with uh, organizations, about this interplay of the inner development and the capacity to act in these uh, groundbreaking, transformative ways, be it business and society, yes. politics, wherever? That is an uh, extremely accurate statement you made about uh, Bohm and his dialogue process. Uh, what I learned from Bohm that day about dialogue gave me uh, the beginning understanding, but it was not until years later, this was in 1980 when I met him, and in, in uh, 2010, I met one of his colleagues who was a young man at that time, post postdoc student, named Lee Nickel, who worked with him on his dialogue project for 10 years. And Lee is the first one that explained to me uh, what I was intuitively feeling, but I could not put my finger on it. And that was the following, that he told me that David Bohm was deeply troubled over the last several years of uh, his life when the dialogue process that he had developed and had uh, written about in this tiny little 25 or 30 page booklet had been distributed all over the world, which was not what he intended to do with it. And, and, and a whole generation of practitioners were using this Bohmian dialogue. And what Lee said was that he realized Bohm realized that they were using it in a superficial way, which, uh, which touched on the point you just made a moment ago, and that is Bohm felt, uh, and he taught the people in his circle this, that you don't do one of these dialogues unless you've done the personal work and bring it into the circle. And that meant meditation, contemplative practices, energy practices, the hard work of uh, and journaling and self-reflection, the hard work outside of the circle. And you bring that in as a, uh, as a more developed human being, and the people around the circle can then begin to operate as a single intelligence, but not until then. Now, occasionally it can happen but on a reliable basis, his view was this is what was needed, and that, that a whole generation of practitioners didn't realize that, and they were doing this in a superficial way, and I personally saw this in uh, many of the transformation projects in Europe that I was watching, uh, and, and in America, that uh, people who had great reputations for teaching about dialogue were just doing it the wrong way. And, uh, and that was a, uh, an, a, an insight that, um, that I had gained over the past 10 years, and it was just verifying uh, for me uh, why I need to, needed to write this new book to explain that uh, you cannot uh, connect a group 
to operate as a single intelligence, or you cannot do these um, uh, 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 create uh, success in these kind of pro uh, processes uh, that I was undertaking if you have people working with you who have not undertaken that hard work. So it, it's, it's the core of the learning for me. On our website globalleadership.tv you will find additional footage, other dialogues with innovation leaders from around the world, and also the hands-on practices that help them and their organizations to move from inspiration to real change.